So now I'm going to talk to you about plant secondary metabolites. What herbalist is not interested in plant secondary metabolites? These are the metabolites which are, do not play essential and obvious metabolic roles, but are turning out to be vital in coordinating plants' interactions with their environments. Hence the idea that stressed plants are better able to help stressed humans. Today we'll talk about three principal categories of secondary metabolite. The terpenoids, phenolic compounds and the alkaloids. Taking the terpenoids first. Terpenoids or terpenes are essentially hydrocarbons um, based on a five carbon isoprene unit. You can see how it's related chemically to the hydrocarbon isopentane, just got the two double bonds instead of all the single bonds of isopentane. Um, in, the, in the synthesis of terpenoids, isoprene units are joined in numerous ways to give rise to a large number of molecular shapes. You can see some of these shapes here in the volatile compo compounds included within the monoterpenes, which are made from two isoprene units and are, are therefore 10 carbon compounds. Some of them are aromatic, uh, i.e. they contain benzene rings. For the plant, they're often pollen attractants or signaling compounds between individual plants. Some of them play a defensive role for the plant. By a historical accident, monoterpenes are so-called because when terpenes were first discovered in the 19th century, chemists thought that the 10 carbon monoterpenes were the basic unit of terpene synthesis. Who says that scientists are always logical in their naming systems? Not stubborn and old-fashioned at all. Sesquiterpenes have a 15 carbon skeleton. They're often bitter in taste and include camazuline, the blue anti-inflammatory constituent from Chamomilla ricketita, and alantalactone, the bitter stimulating constituent which gives inulahelenium or elecampane its characteristic taste and odour. For plants, the sesquiterpenes are um, bitter antifedants um, and uh, antibacterial compounds known as phytolexins, part of the plant's um, defence system. Here we have a table illustrating how the different sizes of terpene compounds are related. Diterpenes with 20 carbons include bitter substances like those found in Marubin vulgari, white whorehound, and Leonurus cardiaca. The triterpenes with 30 carbons include both the um, triterpenoid saponins and the steroidal saponins, resembling steroidal hormones often playing a similar regulatory and signaling role in plants, but more crucially interfering with insect and mammalian reproduction. Then we have rubber which is a massive polymer of terpenes. Terpenoids in plants are synthesized via the mevalonic acid pathway, similar to the synthesis of cholesterol in humans. On this diagram, the names in blue are the enzymes involved in the me mevalonic acid pathway, but we need to worry about those. The names in black are the compounds involved in this pathway. The first step is handled by coenzyme A, which joins acetyl uh, and acetoacetyl groups to give a six carbon compound called hydroxymethylglutaryl 
um, uh, coenzyme A. It's the conversion of HMG-CoA to mevalonic acid, which is blocked by statin drugs in humans. Phase 1 uses ATP, stored energy, to produce a 5-carbon compound, um, isopentanyl 5 pyrophosphate, which can isomerize to dimethyl allyl pyrophosphate. Here we have a better picture of them. And we're familiar by now in biochemistry with the idea that phosphorylated compounds uh, are more reactive. So here's the construction of uh, a monoterpene from two isoprene units, ger geranyl uh, pyrophosphate, and then the 30 carbon intermediary, squalene, which cleverly folds up into a steroidal triterpene, in this case, lanosterol. Now on to the phenolic compounds. Where only a few monoterpenes have benzene rings, all phenolic compounds contain them. Phenol is basically a benzene ring with a hydroxyl group attached. Um, the phenolic compounds are aromatic, volatile and lipid soluble and they have a high affinity for proteins. Sorry about the cut off in its prime business. Phenolic compounds are constructed via the shikimic acid pathway. By many steps this produces the amino acids phenylalanine and tyrosine, which are of course primary metabolites involved in protein synthesis. However, uh, for the plant, they are now a source of aromatic rings for a whole slew of secondary compounds. For example, phenylalanine gives rise ultimately to lignin, suberins, tannins, flavonoids and many others. The first step is a deamination to a phenyl propanoid compound like cinnamic acid. Subsequently phenyl propanoids um, are synthesized and made into these bigger molecules. Phenolic acids are the simplest phenolic compounds and are involved in a plant's resistance to pathogens, both by neutralizing the pathogens and also by signaling to other plants that attack is happening. In fact, we find that salicylic acid is almost universal in, in, the, in the higher plant world. Um, so it's not just restricted to a few plants like um, um, willow or birch or Meadowsweet. Lignans are also involved in pathogen resistance. In addition, they are antioxidant. Not to be confused with lignins, uh, which are pretty huge phenylpropanoid polymers giving structure to wood. Um, Similar compounds, suberins, for, uh, give a structure to um, cork, and cutanes, uh, very similar to lignins, uh, uh, are important in the structure of bark. Basically, these large polymers are kind of hard for herbivores to eat, as well as giving structure to the plant. Flavonoids are a very important phenolic um, group of compounds um, for us uh, phytochemists and um, herbalists. 
in the plant they are antioxidants, they defend against infection and they're involved in photosynthesis. They may occur as flavonoid glycosides like this citrus bioflavonoid, hesperidin, with sugars attached, making them more water soluble. Tannins are phenolic compounds which uh, for the plants are antifeedants again. They disrupt digestion in insects and higher animals by binding to proteins. They can be water soluble, uh, derived from gallic acids, and these are the hydrolyzable tannins. These are potentially hepatotoxic. In contrast, the condensed tannins are derived from catechins. They're less water soluble and they're less damaging. Here's some pictures of some hydrolyzable tannins and condensed tannins. Finally, let's have a brief look at alkaloids. These are the secondary metabolites that historically the pharmaceutical world has been most excited about because of their sometimes profound effects on animals. Actually, in the scale of things, herbalists find alkaloids less important than many of the other constituents nowadays, particularly with regard to using whole plant extracts with their synergistic blend of goodies. For the plant, alkaloids serve to protect from herbivory again. Um, the bitter taste puts off insects and other herbivores. And in the longer term, alkaloids uh, reduce the threat from herbivores by killing them or interfering with their reproduction. Alkaloids have profound effects on animal physiology, particularly the nervous system. They contain nitrogen and ring structures in their molecules. Alkaloids are categorised according to their basic shape defined by the position of nitrogen within the ring structure. They're synthesized in the plant from a number of different amino acids. Pyridine and piperidine alkaloids, including those in lobelia, tobacco and pepper, derive from orth ornithine, as do the tropane alkaloids of the Solanaceae family, for example, Belladonna and Henbane. The sometimes hepatotoxic perilisdine alkaloids are also ornithine derived. Opiates like morphine and amines like ephedrine are derived from, from phenylalanine and tyrosine. The indole alkaloids include, include harmine, where are we going? Harmine from Pasflora and reserpine, a potent antihypertensive and antipsychotic alkaloid from Rauwulfia, which herbalists aren't allowed to use. Indoles and quinine are derived from tryptophan. The quinolizidine alkaloids like spartane, um, which may be the agent in cyrothamnus, broom tops, which can the heart. Um, are made in the plant from lysine. Various amino acids are used to make the purine alkaloids which include caffeine from coffee and other plants, theobromine in chocolate and theophylline in tea. So there you have it. Plant secondary metabolites in a nutshell. <laughs>